Hi, my name's Dan, and this video is uh, part of the suite of videos that I'm doing on game design, but it's not part of a, a short series of any kind. It's just a standalone video that I'm doing about achievements in game design. So here we go. Let's see what we get into. Right. So first of all, I'm going to uh, go through some basics. Most of this is stuff that if you're a game player, you really know. Um, so apologies. I'll go quite quickly. Um, achievements are about giving a player a reward for doing something or for doing a certain number of some things. Um, you'll see examples as we go along. Is generally uh, not really part of the core gameplay. It sits outside the, the game world. Um, and uh, I, I think of it as kind of, well, I say sugar on top. I mean, an extra thing to add uh, di uh, an extra dimension to the to the playing of the game. Um, it's also somewhat meta game, so it's uh, they tend to be more about the player rather than the avatar. Uh, there are some achievements that might be you know make your avatar run uh, a thousand miles or uh, something along those lines, but it might be things like coming and playing the game every day for a week or uh, uh, something along those lines. Um, in that sense, it can break immersion. Uh, I don't think this is a serious problem. But people have, seem to have found that uh, achievements are a good thing generally in games. Uh, so uh, very quickly, history of um, uh, achievements. They've been around for a long time. For quite a while, they were a fairly rare thing. Uh, when the Xbox started doing uh, achievements as a meta system for the games, that was when they really kind of kicked off and became uh, a very popular part of games. And now they're uh, an assumed part of most games, or you know, most commercial games at uh, a certain level have some kind of achievement system or badges or something like that. Um, they can be called various different things. They can be called achievements. They can be called... Uh, accomplishments, they can be called badges, they can be trophies. I can't think of all the different words that uh, that can be used for them. Right. So I'm going to quickly, now everything's going to be quickly, I'm going to quickly do some design thoughts. So some thoughts about how you might go about designing a set of achievements for a game. Uh, so the first one is to say that it is bizarrely effective uh, using achievements. It's a bit like a sticker. When you've got um, uh, a kid on there, you know, real rewarding behavior or consistency in something, uh, then at certain ages, stickers can be really, really effective for them. It's not something that's of any intrinsic value, and it's it's almost never that achievements in a game have any gameplay value at all, but they do have a certain kind of bragging rights to them. Um, and it partly it just shows the, um, the power of, that is behind just saying well done to somebody. Um, and I think that's that's something that can be applied in all sorts of areas of life as well as games. Um, uh, they're often done on a sort of uh, logarithmic curve. Now, this is a thing that you will see quite often in game systems, is that uh, things happen uh, more frequently when you first start playing a game, and they become rarer. Um, and this happens in terms of uh, leveling up when you've got XP, uh, uh, the increase in rewards that you get for missions and all sorts of things. Uh, the curve looks a bit like this. This is a mathematical thing. Don't worry about it too much. Um, the thing that's uh, trying to be displayed here really is that it's, uh, 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 it's, it's a kind of diminishing returns thing. So that on the left-hand side, uh, the graph is going up steeply, so you've got stuff happening quickly. And then as the game progresses that slows down. But that means that um, there's all sorts of psychological effects of the reasons for using logarithmic curves for all sorts of things in games. Um, and it's very much an accepted practice in game design to use these kind of uh, curves. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, and the effect is that you establish the ideas early on. But as you uh, get further into the game, the frequency of the, the rewards kind of match the amount of commitment the player has put into the game. Um, and so you spread them out. If you are you know, having achievements every few seconds within the first minute of playing the game, maybe is a bit too much, but a few achievements early on is good. You show the players that there are achievements. You give them very quick rewards for 
for being in there and playing. And then you start to slow down. Um, it's good to uh, cater towards various different types of player. So uh, you probably know, I mean, some games are fairly simple and only cater to one type of player, but a lot of games cater to a variety of different play styles and uh, different um, uh, player personalities. So there's a guy called Bartle, uh, I don't know if you've come across this before, who uh, proposed this idea of four player types. And it's very much a simplistic, view of players but is really really useful as a design tool to think about these four different aspects of games so the four player types that he um, he suggested are socializers so they particularly like interacting with the players so that's particularly useful for uh, uh, in mmos and other social gaming situations there's killers so uh, they're people who really like to uh, beat other people so they're the pvp um, the people who are keen on that. There's explorers who like interacting with the world, and in particular, like uh, finding new areas. And then there's achievers who like to do full completion and to uh, to actually, you know, make something happen within the world. And while in achievements, the achiever is obviously the the one who's going to be the uh, maybe the core focus here because they're the one who's going to be most uh, motivated by achievements. It's possible to think about all these different areas as you're creating achievements. So um, uh, I think achievers fairly obvious, but Explorer, if you've got a game with a large uh, world, then one way of encouraging explorers is to dot around some kind of collectible. Um, and for some reason in my head, I've just thought of a, a bit of a silly game idea to have little rubber ducks that are spread around your game. Uh, you've got maybe uh, 200 ducks spread through the whole of your environment. And the player has to explore to find them. Some of them are really easy to get and some of them are fairly obscure to find. And that encourages the explorer. Um, killers acting on players, well, uh, getting a kill ratio of... Uh, I've, Killed three times as many people who, who have killed me is a fairly uh, uh, hard ask, I guess, but that could be a, quite a, an amazing achievement. And then socializers, um, people who do things with other players. Now, s some games very much target the socializers, um, mobile phone games, Facebook type games, etc., because what they're trying to do is to get people to play. Um, to draw the people into play. And so they will give rewards to people specifically for asking other people to come and play or to interact with the system. But you could do it, you know, in, a, in an MMO, you know, chatted for nine hours without doing anything uh, of uh, uh, gameplay interest could be an achievement. And, uh, and why not? Uh, okay, so... Um, one design choice that you can make for achievements is whether they're blind or they're seen. Um, most games have them seen, so that by this I mean you can you can see what the achievements are going to be before you achieve them, um, and you can see a complete list of achievements. So you can target specific ones and uh, try and uh, try and achieve them. Uh, so that's the uh, the anticipation way of doing it. The other way to do it is to, is to do it blind so that the player doesn't know what the achievements are. You only get to see the achievements if you actually achieve them. Um, and there are two things that that could potentially drive. So one of them is that you, uh, that gives a surprise reward. And surprise rewards are quite uh, good in terms of uh, motivation uh, in general. And the other one is that if you've got a decent uh, player base, that can then spark conversations uh, within your player community where people are reporting on the achievements that they've found. And so that uh, <coughs> that gives a driver for people to interact there. Uh, okay, so moving on. Uh, we're going to quickly go through the mechanics. The salt, again, this stuff is fairly obvious. Um, so um, uh, the first thing is that when an achievement is achieved, there is usually some kind of pop-up notification. Here's an example. Uh, something appears on the screen to tell you you've achieved um, the uh, achievement. You probably have some kind of list to say what achievements have been gained so that the player can go back and look at uh, the achievement list. This one here also lists possible achievements as well. And you might track progress of achievements as well. Um, here's another one with the, uh, one that's uh, been particularly well uh, 
targeted this blast cannon specialist here. Um, the, it is possible for uh, some systems, some platforms do achievement systems of their own and for you to hook into those. So uh, in particular, I'm thinking of Xbox achievements and uh, Steam achievements, um, where these these things are kind of, if you're going to release a game on one of these platforms, it's assumed that you will have achievements as part of the system and they're tracked within that meta system. Okay, um, and the final one is that it's a fairly common thing to uh, have some pretty badges to um, to represent your achievements. Here's one where they they all look like medals. Um, oh, where is it? Here's another that's particularly shiny, I think. Um, and the shininess of these badges is, I think, actually quite useful as a um, as a motivator. Uh, again, it's a bit like the sticker effect. It's it feels to me like on the first thoughts that why would this be important to anybody but it does seem to be the case that uh, these pretty pictures can actually motivate people um in the list of things that i'm going to quickly mention i'm going to quickly mention gamification so uh, gamification is the process of using game elements in non-game situations um, and there are all sorts of uh, systems or things to help motivate people uh, in terms of marketing or advertising or engagement with websites. So um, Stack Overload uh, uses it. Various um, forums use it in various types. Uh, here's an example from a, a company that um, uh, specialise in uh, supporting this kind of thing. Uh, and uh, of all the things that are used in, for, for gamification, so uh, uh, motivation act or using game uh, mechanisms outside of the game context, uh, achievements and badges is one of the most commonly used thing. Okay, so finally, I'm going to uh, suggest an exercise. Uh, this is uh, a standalone video, as I said, not a, um, a full series. Um, normally in a series, I would do uh, some exercises to say things that you can have a go at if you wanted to. Uh, I wanted to get some practice at this particular aspect of game design. And this is a fairly obvious thing to do, which is that uh, you create an achievements list. So if you've got a, a game design that's ongoing, and any kind of game designer has some game thoughts that they're working on, you might have done some other exercises based on them. There are uh, three scenarios that I use quite commonly for my exercises. There's uh, Lord of the Ring Clears, uh, there's Sword of Dankoth, and uh, there's the one that I call your sci-fi game. So if you have one of those underway, feel free to uh, to do this. I'm not, of course, by any means telling you that this is a thing that you have to do. And as I say, all the times that I do exercises, you're, in, uh, you're encouraged to do this and write it down, but I'm not uh, planning to respond and give any feedback to anybody who tries to send me these things. So sorry about that. Okay, so that's it from me for now.